it's been a long time since I've made video mostly because I don't have private space and a lot of times I'm thinking well I am not very clean I haven't showered in a week that's <laughs> life in Africa sometimes because here on the Shire when it's rainy we don't have hot water because we use solar and uh, we get lazy <laughs> so um, I'm sorry I feel when I'm not creating and I'm not talking and I'm not sharing my heart I feel like um, I'm missing something because this is what I love to do I love sharing with you I love that I have this ability especially being out here in the middle of nowhere in Africa it means that I'm a bit isolated so finding friends and um, connecting with people is very difficult so I don't know where I left off it's been a long time so I just thought I'd kind of skip through some things and skim over some things and just kind of give a quick synopsis of what I've been up to um, as all of you know I was here almost a year ago this is almost so this February time last year I was about eight pounds lighter or I was probably maybe 43 or 45 kilos around there and now I'm 47 kilos and no it doesn't matter but it's just to show you that I'm healthier I'm happier um, I went from this time last year I hadn't told anyone that I'd already told um, my ex-husband now um, my husband at the time my truth I came out to him you know I'd lived 24 years of trying to please and couldn't be what I needed to be in I finally came out to him uh, in August 2018 so you'd already known and I was going through so much this time last year and I was sharing videos this is the space where I came out in this room and this room was his bedroom at the time because um, well just because it was and so here I am in this space I've traveled all the way around the world and back <sighs> interestingly I went from Kenya and being isolated in Kenya I was offered a layover in Rome which was fantastic and so healing and I loved Rome I loved Rome because I was able to just sort of be myself and be free um, I didn't have to be scared about being gay okay and for some people you might think oh, okay being gay is what you do in the bedroom but that's not true being gay when you're gay it's not just what happens in the bedroom because you know really I don't think you need to know those details that part of my life is private what happens in the bedroom interestingly though being gay is more about what you're drawn to who you want to flirt with who you think is cute and and that's difficult because if you're in Kenya for example you can't let on who are you gonna flirt with who are you going to you know I'm sorry but it's true I mean if you want a relationship if you want to be like any other normal human who seeks love we those of us who are queer it's different than those who are not so for us um, we'll be in a room and think somebody is so beautiful and if we let our feelings show and our eyes give us away we can get in trouble it's what we have to live with and we have to constantly worry are they gonna notice that I think they're cute you know so that's something we struggle with I would think and that's something I struggle with I know so then I went to Rome and Rome it didn't matter yeah, for some reason it didn't matter it was just okay it was acceptable and then uh, in England I was with my the I stayed at Naomi Coles she's like a sister to me and while I was there she was so warm and so accepting and so helpful and just made me feel loved even though she, yeah just made me feel normal and it was wonderful and then I went to Texas and my time in Texas was well it was hard I was scared I'll be honest I was scared because my parents were fine I mean like my 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 stepmom was wonderful um, but it still was very awkward the energy there I don't know if it's in my empathy or if it was triggers or what but I mean I'd go past my old church and the people I knew just no one contacted me 
you know, I didn't have a welcome after 15 years. I didn't have a welcome there. So it was hard. I felt like a misfit. I felt like I didn't fit in. I felt like I had to hide even more than I'd had to hide in Kenya. And of course, there was the whole process of getting a daughter in university and going to university myself so that I could get a job and I got a job and was working for Manticures teaching English as a second language, plus being a full-time student, plus being a single mom to all of my children and all of those processes and getting a divorce and getting all my legal stuff, like my driver's license and all that stuff done and redone. I had to take the test and because my expired, my license expired a long time ago. My point is it was just manic. Texas, Texas was hard. I was just... Texas was so hard. So I think that by being in Texas, I got in a really low place and it was hard for me to talk to you because I didn't want you to see how ugly it was. Not Texas, but me. I didn't want you to see how ugly um, my journey was because <laughs> it was super hard. And uh, I, I couldn't show you because it was not pretty. So I'm not going to tell you the details of that. Um, I will say though, um, I had to get to a point where I make a decision what I was going to do. And Johnny was here and he does not like this space, the Shire. This is all me, as in like, this was my dream. It took me three years to convince him to build it, to, to move, to to get land and, and do all this. He didn't like it and he still doesn't like it. So he begged me to come back, asked me to take it over or he was just gonna leave. And I was like, fine, I will, we'll, uh, you know, I will come back to Kenya. And yeah, it's risky a little bit, but I don't fear. I don't fear of being in Kenya. Kenya. Kenya is home. I think the hardest part about being in Kenya is A, living on an off-grid farm requires a great deal of energy. I spent my whole morning outside, wonderful, but in my, my fingernails and everything were all muddy and dirty because I was planting fig trees and weeding the garden and just, I mean, just dealing with life on an off-grid farm and homeschooling, etc. So, uh, for those who don't know, Johnny has moved out. Um, I sold my horses and helped him with money to move out. So there's that. And um, that's good. That means I'm here and I'm moving on. But I will say my dreams to, to do theater and acting and all those, I don't know how I'm going to fulfill them and how I'm going to get to do those things. Um, suggestions are welcome. But that is a dream of mine. I do aspire to uh, build a stage here on the Shire and to um, do lots of things. Um, but right now, I am so focused on literally just cleaning the garden. The grass was up to our shoulders to the point where snakes were everywhere. So now we've mowed and we've cleaned and we are just outside every single day working in the yard and getting things going. And I've had to hire help, so I've got people helping me as well. So that's what's going on right now is just being focused on literally clean up. And then um, the house itself needs repair. The back wall needs to have glass windows put in because right now it's just wooden shutters and those shutters are not really safe. Anyone could just break into them. So that's happening. I've got guests coming in February from Texas. Wonderful woman. Her name's Katie Durio and her brother, Pat. And Katie runs an equine assisted therapy program called Stable Spirit. And I am just honored she's coming out here. I feel bad that I don't have my horses. But, um, yeah, I've had to... Had to to temporarily not have horses because right now my financial base I've had to start over and I don't have a I don't have backing yet um but I oh, I'm so much happier I'm happier I can't even I mean sure it's not perfect but oh The freedom is worth it. I would have gone into the pits of hell and wrestled Satan myself for freedom. And I don't know why I said that. 
but I'm so happy that I am free to be me. It's interesting, a friend of mine was showing me some videos of uh, some TV shows, something called The L Word, and I was like, oh my goodness, you mean there's actually lesbian stuff on TV. I did not know this. I don't know if there is or not, but I don't know where those shows are aired. All I know is I have been isolated in Africa. So like, I don't know what's out in the media. I don't know these things. I am so far behind in the times for me. Uh, this is all the scary dirty. And, and I didn't realize, you know, that in some areas of the world is okay. So I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm learning. I feel like a 12 year old kid. Actually, maybe I've progressed to about the age of 16 now. Um, maybe, um, I'm learning a lot. So that's where I am right now. I'm on the farm and the highs and lows are less low and more highs now. And that's really good. I still have them. I still have moments where I feel like maybe I'm a disappointment, but I just look back and I go, well, you know what? People who truly care about me are going to want me happy. And this isn't a choice. Uh, it's not a choice, but choosing to not fight it, that part is. So um, I'm embracing myself now, literally and figuratively. I'm embracing myself and being confident and just going, <sighs> doesn't matter. It's not that big a deal, you know. Um, maybe in Kenya it is. So that's that. Um, that's where I am. I'm healthier and happier. So thank you for following. If you're curious about anything, if you'd like to ask me any questions, or ask me about um, anything. I even thought maybe I should talk to you about what it's like being a mom with kids who are going through this journey with me. I'm a very open mom, yeah? And my kids are happy to see me happy. It is definitely a struggle at times because divorce is never easy. And I also am here in part because their dad is here and they need to see him. And he's actually just come today to come see them. So he's in my house right now, which is, you know, it's awkward, but I'm up here and recording video and talking to you. So there you go. Right. Gosh, I don't know what else to say. I do feel like I have loads to say and I just don't know where to begin. So I think that if you could, click like and subscribe. I want to do lots of videos, but I cannot do live stream. I want to do live videos, but I can't do that until I have a thousand likes. So if you could hit like, that'd be great. Share this with your friends and get them to like my channel. Um, then I'll be able to do live streaming and that'd be awesome because I like doing that and then I can interact with you as well. All right. Well, I'll talk to you soon and I look forward to sharing my journey with you even more. Don't forget, ask me questions in the comments and I'll answer them. Right. Talk to you soon.